Again, we're going to use partial fraction decomposition to integrate this function. And once more, you should try pausing and seeing if you can finish the problem, and if not, watch and see how it works. We're going to start with this rational function, 5x squared plus 3x minus 2 over x cubed plus 2x squared. And we'll carry out the partial fraction decomposition to write this as a series of simpler rational functions. So as always, we want to start by factoring the denominator as much as possible. First, notice that there's an x squared term that's common to both. And once we do that, we're left with x squared times x plus 2, which means there's nothing else to factor. Now we can write down the form of the partial fractions. Notice that we have x plus 2, and then we have a repeated factor x. That's not a quadratic factor, it's just a repeated linear factor x. So we can write this as a over x plus b over x squared plus c over x plus 2. The last step then is to solve for a, b, and c, which we start by multiplying both sides by this denominator. On the left side, we'll just be left with the numerator 5x squared plus 3x minus 2. On the right side, the first term will cancel an x, so we'll have a times x times x plus 2. The second term will cancel x squared, and the third term will cancel x plus 2. Now to pick values of x that will allow us to solve for a, b, and c, we want to pick ones that make things as easy as possible. And looking on that right side, there are factors of x and factors of x plus 2. So the two simplest values to use would be 0 and negative 2. And there's not a third factor that would zero anything out. So for our third value, we'll just need to pick another number. We'll pick something easy like 1. So we'll use x equals 0 and x equals negative 2 because they make things zero out. And then for our third value, we'll just pick an easy number. We'll use 1 because it will make the algebra as simple as possible. When we do this, if x equals 0, the left-hand side just equals negative 2. And then on the right-hand side, anything that has a factor of x will zero out. So the first and third terms are going to both be 0, which just leaves b times 2. So if negative 2 equals b times 2, b just equals negative 1. If x equals negative 2, on the left side, we should be careful here. 5 times positive 4 plus 3 times negative 2 minus 2. That's going to equal 20 minus 6, that's 14, minus 2, that's 12. It's easy to get mixed up with those minus signs and make simple arithmetic mistakes. But just be careful, we get 12 there. And on the right-hand side, anything with an x plus 2 will disappear because that will be 0. So the first two terms will go away. And we'll just have c times negative 2 squared, which is 4. So 12 equals c times 4, which means that c equals 3. And then for our third value, when x equals 1, on the left side we have 5 plus 3 minus 2 which is 6. And on the right hand side we have a times 1 times 3 plus b times 3 plus c times 1. And now that we know what b and c are, we know that 3b is going to be negative 3 and c is going to be positive 3. So those both cancel and we have 6 equals 3a or a equals 2, which means that our complicated looking rational function can be written in partial fraction form, which is simpler, as a over x, so 2 over x, plus b over x squared, so minus 1 over x squared, plus c over x plus 2, where c is 3. And then if we want to integrate the left-hand side, we can integrate these partial fractions to get our answer. 
Again, the actual integration is pretty easy. 2 over x, the integral is 2 natural log of x. 1 over x squared, we just need to use the power rule there, nothing fancy. And we get positive 1 over x, because the integral of 1 over x squared is negative 1 over x. So the negatives cancel. And then on the third one, there is a quick u sub, but again, it's a familiar form, so we can skip through that. And there's our answer for the integral of this rational function.